Sorry. Yes. Okay. So this 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 was my cover. Now you see you see my screen, right? Okay. So I was on this slide. I started. This is the geography or the region. Okay. You see it and, and um, top view from Google Earth of the fortification I was talking about. And this was my first slide. <laughs> Okay, these uh, are two, these all, all these uh, fragments of, of, of LRA1 type. And you also can see here a graffiti with the same letters, which is interesting. And I was moving to the, another, another type of Christian invocation. Is Seta uh, Vita. This is a late Cretan amphora. And it should be read as Seos Voice or Voisos. Uh, like God help or helping God. Um, there are some other letters which probably uh, come from two words, but I haven't deciphered. Uh, another common type uh, are the dependency showing measures. Uh, on the left is an LRA2 type of 64 and a half sextari. On the right, there are two back shaped amphora of 46 sextari each. And of course, there are many dipinti which are hard to read, uh, whether they are too uh, small or uh, the text faded away, but also it's the vagueness of uh, cursive writing sometimes. Uh, at least some of us sometimes have problems to understand our own writing. <laughs> um, and the more promising uh, direction of this search is to study dipinti uh, on a biamphora type. Uh, Jean-Luc uh, Fournet uh, proposed uh, a deep pintology, as he called it, based on a collection of LRA1 dipinti from Egypt. And we have one such amphora in Dinojetia, uh, uh, having uh, dipinti of what he called type A and B on its uh, shoulders, and a very interesting dipinto of type C under the handle. Uh, it is uh, written upside down, as you can see, and it consists of uh, two names and some num or number or some numbers underneath. Um, the, I, I also provided some examples from Furness publications. And the names, there, there are two names. The first name uh, belongs to the Christian onomastic koine. It's uh, Ioannis or Paulus or uh, uh, in the right uh, corner, you also have uh, Stephanos, and I, I can read easily on our inscription Ioano in the first line, but the second name it's uh, non-Greek, and um, for also pr propose several uh, explanation. One would be that we have a pair of local producer, which would be uh, non-Greek and uh, a Greek merchant. Another uh, amphora type with, uh, you can study by uh, the dipinti, you can study are the dipinti on Heraclean shell of F amphorae, which um, here at Dinogetia uh, fall into two categories. Uh, the first group contains the uh, dipinti with few letters or symbols, which I don't know how to decipher. But, but the second category, they uh, also contain names in genitive. And the one dipinti belongs to a so-called A plus P, uh, alpha plus P type, which is very common north of Black Sea, uh, Tragoshkina in Don Delta and in Eastern Crimea. And the name on this one is Alipios here in the genitive. And also underneath there is a number, which is uh, probably too large to be a quantity because this shell of F amphora have much smaller volumes. Um, two other specimen contain, bear the letters uh, A1, which could stand for several names. I propose several on the slide. And I also noticed a very interesting parallel between uh, a fragment of uh, Heraclean carrot amphora, which was presented yesterday by Andreo Paitz. And on the right, it's an amphora from Asinia Nagora, which was subsequently interpreted as a shell of F type. And in my opinion, also the positions of the text and the content, they are similar. 
and the Athenian amphora was read as containing a reference to the type of wine, but I'm wondering if you have names on both of them. Uh, I also like to add that two days ago in, in a presentation, I think it was Martha Wall, I saw stamps with the letter S-T-O-L. Uh, of course, the, 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 it was uh, an amphora of, I think, uh, 5th century BC, so it would be almost 1,000 years between them, but at least could be taken as a clue for a name, a Greek name. Um, another uh, depicted with names also occur on other type of amphora. This is an LRA4 amphora, which also it's a name. So this it's, it seems to be a quite a large group of the painting with names. And now moving on to graffiti. There are of course also many graffiti which have only a few scratches, uh, letters and other symbols which are hard to decipher. But some of them I think we can make sense of and this is one of them. Uh, this is on a back-shaped amphora and I read it as pigma. And I'm wondering if it's not, uh, if it's a reference to rennet uh, that is to curd milk. And you also can read there a passage from Aristotle. Um, and as I, as I researched, I found out a study carried out on to the Tanian and Phoenician amphorae from uh, lower Guadalquivir Valley in the second Iron Age confirmed that some of the amphorae were used to store milk products. If I remember correctly, they were the local amphorae that they used for that. Um, unlike the Depinti, the graffiti here can also be in Latin. And um, on the left, it's on LRA2. Uh, it appears to be a, a name invocative. There is also a, a small uh, hasta there, which could be taken as for V, Latin V or U. And the one on the right, uh, it's a local amphora, which seems to be a verb in imperative, like the vive, like live. And this is one on the right is interesting also because it's written upside down. So it could be conceivably come from an ostracon, but it's hard to be sure. Uh, another interesting uh, one is this uh, graffito on a late Cretan jar. Uh, it's in Gothic runes. Um, it seems to be a rare find, but I'm not sure if they are underreported or, or what be the reason. Um, I deciphering it, it, it's a challenge. Uh, I, I can recognize the first, the second, the fourth rune. It could be a, a Fusar uh, graffito, let's say the first uh, five letters of their alphabet. We know many such graffitos on, on, on Greek pottery with A, B, C, D, E or similar. So it could be the same habit, if you will. But again, I'm not sure. Um, however, much more interesting than what the graffito actually says is that it's here and it was interpreted as evidence for a group of Goths uh, sitting here. This one was found in the term in a late fourth, early fifth century context. And that is the date when the, the complex was abandoned. So they said it could be come from a group of Goths that uh, stayed here. Uh, however, an, another hypothesis, and I think it's uh, quite alluring, is that comes from a, a soldier uh, from the fort, from the Roman fort, because we know the Romans hire such soldiers uh, at least from the late uh, second century, the Germanic soldier, because we have an epitaph of, uh, from early third century AD. So, uh, his father of Germanic origin was uh, rolled up in the army in the, the last decade of the second century. And also we have the famous uh, res gestae of uh, the Sasanian king Shapur, which uh, uh, has this passage on the Roman armies of Gordian coming with many uh, Goths and Germans in the ranks. And uh, coming back to Greek, 
We also have an ostracon, which is a list of names of quantities. Um, the, it's also written upside down. Um, um, and the, the abbreviation for MO for MODI is quite common. And the reason I, I suggest to read as MODI Italic is because a quantity of 13 MODI looks a bit large. Sir MODI are already 48 sextari, uh, sextari as a dry measure, of course. So probably it's just uh, three modis each. So we have a list of names and quantities probably of grain. And uh, with this graffito, I reach the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm waiting for your questions.